Hello, it's Dr. Ez at the Hilton Sedona Resort and Spa in Sedona, Arizona. I just experienced the Pure Living Expo here in Sedona. Lots of great people, community builders, uh, tons of stuff happening, you know. It's amazing. 15 years ago, I was shown a mathematical phenomenon. You can find it at clarityuniversity.com. If you click on the history tab and scroll down, you'll see a link. It's uh, never been given to any math department of any universities or anything. And it's, it's not the Fibonacci sequence or anything else that I've ever seen. I still have never seen anything like it. And while I've been here in Sedona, I was given another download or whatever. I was literally, through spirit, shown some other things about it. So one of the things that I first noticed about this particular chart is let's just, let's just go over it. If you look at the numbers on this chart, basic principle of numerology, if you times the number zero by zero or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's always the number zero. And if you times one by zero through nine, you get one, you get zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you times two, you get zero, two, four, six, eight, one, three, five, seven, and nine. If you get uh, the number three is zero, and then three, six, nine, three, six, nine, three, six, and then nine. Again, you always have zeros and nines. Time, nine times anything is nine, except for zero. The reason why is because, you know, nine times two is 18. The one and the eight, you add those together, and it's a nine. That's what we're doing here. Basic rendering principle of numerology. So, uh, you know, the four is four, eight, three, seven, two, six, one, five. And the five, interestingly enough, reverses that pattern. Five, one, six, two, seven, three, eight, four. What I noticed about the four and the five is like every other number was like four, three, two, one. The four, eight, three, seven, two, one, six, and the one and the five. And then the five, it was going to go five, six, seven, eight, but it was going to drop down four numbers uh, when, you, when you do that. And how this happens, you, you might have a hard time following me. A five times one is five. And we're right now focusing on the numbers between one and eight. Forget about the zeros and the nines for a minute. Let's just, they kind of reverse mirror each other. Let's just think about the four and the five. What do they really have to do with each other? The five times one is five, five times two is 10, a one and a zero is one. So we've got the five and the one. And then it's 15 when you times it by three, which is a six. And then a 20, which is a two. So again, five, one, six, two. And it goes seven, three, eight, four, which is exact reverse of what the number four did. You may want to take some time Go to clarityuniversity.com, click on the history tab, and take some time and do all this math for yourself. And then come back and watch this video while I can really, um, you'll catch some more insights on it. Because the first time, I didn't get what I'm about ready to show you. Uh, like the whole second part of the download is still coming. And uh, we don't know what the real practical applications of this are still yet. But I may have just been given a huge clue. And I'm going to be giving some of those huge clues to you for the first time in history, I think, right now through this video. Uh, as soon as I got this, um, one of the mornings that I was here in Sedona getting ready to go to the Pure Living Expo, I was with a couple of friends, and I shared it with them. And I said, well, I'm making a video here at this event, and I'll be publishing it up on my, my YouTube channel. And um, this is going to be interesting. You know, the six, it reverse mirrors the three. That, those are the, like, the easiest, that, and the ones are, are pretty much the easiest, the one and the eight. But six, three, nine, six, three, nine, six, three, that just reverse mirrored the three, six, nine, three, six, nine, three, six. Um, if you're just looking between the one and the eight, you're not looking at the nine zeros anymore because those are always, you know, 
9 times anything is 9 except for 0, because that's always 0. But they still, um, it's interesting. So you got the 7. What does a 7 have to do with a 2? What was the 2? 2, 4, 6, 8. And then 1 as a 10. 3 as a 12. A 5 as the 14. 7 as a 16. You know, that's what it is. 2, 4, 6, 8. 1, 3, 5, 7. And the 7 is, five, is 7, 5, 3, 1, 8, 6, 4, 2. You guys, when I first saw this 15 years ago, I looked at each number as a like an energy pattern. I could see when I did in my mind's eye when I did the math, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's like a yin and a yang, and it's also sort of like um, a bunch of other stuff. Like we'll show you, and again, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, what do really a uh, eight and a one have to do with each other? Well, one of the things I noticed about this chart, I kind of cut it in a square for you. If you take it and fold it in half with the zeros on each corner, any number you push is the same number on the other side. You know, if you look at the, uh, the way that that works. And then I did it the same way, except for the nines and zeros may not actually be the same when you do it like, like that. Any number you push is the same number on the other side. There's one way you can fold it like this, where you push the nines, it's a zero. And another way where you just fold it in half, where you know the zeros are zeros, nines and nines, but every other number still is the same. I think the nines and zeros are kind of part of the interweaving. Maybe it explains the interweaving of the universe. So one of the things that I did here in Sedona is I not just, uh, you know, didn't just fold it in half like this. I took it another step and I fold it in half this way. And a quarter, still every number you push is the same number, with the exception of nines and zeros. And even if you were to, it's interesting, I thought of separating this, cutting it here, and then taking the zeros and nines and sort of switching so that um, you'd have it here instead of down here. So I don't know what you, if you know what I mean, but to cut it and then take the nines and zeros and sort of hem them together, have all the other numbers hanging on the outside. I don't know what that would do, but that was just, um, that was just today. And I got this on, uh, oh, this is one of the other first things that I did with it. I. I said, you know what, what if we, you know, after I decided to fold it in quarter, I was kind of taking this more folded shapes, I decided to fold it this way, and I thought, you know what, maybe this is like a fundamental piece of puzzle of the universe, or how universes are built, and how everything works, how, how you know, it's kind of interesting. So I got a whole bunch of them here. You know, what happens if we, uh, if we were to pair them together like this, what is the math of that, or if they just start building, like, um, it's kind of interesting. This is with the numbers matching on the side, and uh, I don't know if that's meant to be, or if they're meant to be like, more like this, where the nines and zeros match, or if they're meant to be switched, so that uh, all of the nines and zeros are opposites. I don't know if um, I don't know if this is going to be given to the right person who can help fill in the rest of what this really means but sometimes that's how things work you know one person is giving credit for one part of something where they were able to put two and two together and then maybe two or three things together and then another person comes along and has some other pieces of the puzzle just like putting any other puzzle together if you've ever put a puzzle together with one or two or whatever how many people um, you just all work as a team so 
if this is something that's interesting to you, if you're, this might just sort of magically, how, you know, how can it be where this could just effortlessly fall into the hands of the right person? I, I mentioned the name Legos with this too. So I also built, uh, you know, sacred geometry. It's like seven is the number that all sacred geometry is built on. So I had pulled out like seven of these things. Holy cow. Well, I'm not showing all seven of them now, but now you can see I've got three of them in my hand. Here's, uh, let me show you something. It's kind of tilted the camera here. Get, okay. So I've got a whole bunch of them. This is like three of them in my hand, but I've got these also. Check it out. Inside of each other. Wow, universe is folding and unfolding. And that folding and unfolding and reorganizing um, however many you can imagine however this works. That folding and folding and reorganizing of everything, you know, could explain how the whole universe could fold on itself or unfold. So, may also explain how we go from a lower to higher realm. And what's happening right now is an expansion, an unfolding. It's just interesting. You never know, like I said, who, uh, who has some other pieces of the puzzle to solve the riddle, to solve the puzzle. But this was termed a mathematical phenomenon, and it's, uh, I talked about the yin and the yang, the energy you can see that it's um, definitely, it's amazing the relationships revealed by this chart and the geometry, the relationships revealed, the, the, the energy patterns the, of the numbers themselves in any shape that they take. Anyway. Thought that uh, you might enjoy that if anybody is into numbers or math or whatever. Hope you enjoy that. You have a blessed day, and uh, who knows, maybe the secrets of the universe really are unfolding before us.